Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be showing you a couple of the different safety systems that I use in my garage. I have the SAML24 safety spotter arms as well as the safety spotter straps. And we're gonna go through uh, how I use both of these as safeties, as well as uh, I use this for a couple other things. I actually use both systems in my gym, sometimes at the same time, and we're gonna cover those in detail. But I just wanted to make this video because I noticed that there's not a lot of information about the actual difference between the Monster Light version of the spotter arm and the spotter strap. So first up is the SAML24 safety spotter arm. It has nine holes, all five eighths inch diameter. There's one pin that actually is solid built into the safety spotter arm and then a safety pin. Right off the bat, this is one of the areas that I think Row can definitely improve. If you look, there's only a single hole, but there's definitely plenty of material that's still left here on the bottom. Now with the Monster Light series, you have the west side hole spacing where it's just one inch hole spacing all throughout the bench area. Right here. So you have one inch hole spacing. The problem with the one inch hole spacing when it comes to items like this is that there will be times where you have this pin in one of the one inch holes where this will not line up with another hole. So right now I actually have it in a hole up on the top where it doesn't line up with the west side hole. It's not that big of a deal because if I'm being perfectly honest, you don't really need to use these pins. The unit is pretty solid by itself, but a really simple solution for that not lining up with a hole would be that Rogue just drills a second 5 8 inch hole right here. I could do it too, but I feel like it's just a really simple modification that Rogue could make in their manufacturing process that would make this arm just one little bit better. Now obviously this thing can be used as a safety spotter arm, so if you're doing some sort of heavy lift and you don't have a second person with you or the second person you're working with isn't as strong as you are and you're worried about your safety, you can use these. It has the, the non-metallic, I think it's like a, I'm gonna mess this up, but like PTFE, some sort of plastic that's up on the top. And it's attached with three countersunk Allen head screws. And it's actually countersunk in there so that if the bar comes down, the actual screw head doesn't impact the bar at all. So it doesn't cause any damage that way. There's also this lip right here that keeps the bar from actually rolling off the end of the safety spotter arm. So you can use it as a safety spotter arm or another thing that you can use it for is if you're doing a pull against an immovable object. So rather than having it mounted up so that the plastic portion is up where the barbell would be coming down on the bottom like in a safety configuration, you can flip it And now what you can do is you can perform, let's say, a deadlift where you pull up into the safety spotter arms and then you just continue to pull. And you're not gonna pull the rack up and so you're getting a little bit of strength benefit from that. You can also use it for bench so you can push into something. Uh, just make sure that you have a second set of safeties or you have a spotter so you don't drop the bar on yourself. Again, bench press is kind of one of the most terrifying lifts as a home gym owner. Another way that you can use the safety spotter arms is actually as a J cup of sorts. So when you're doing movements such as a pin press, when you're doing a pin press, you don't necessarily want to have to come down in this two inch space that's normally there for a J cup. You want to be able to come back down in case it's a heavy load and maybe drop it not exactly in the cup. So that's where the safety spotter arm comes in handy. You can raise these up to a level. A uh, fun little fact, the pin height for the J-cup. So basically, the distance between this pin and this platform in the J-cup is almost the same as the difference between the pin and this surface on the safety spotter arm. What's nice about that is if you know that your J-cup has to be in a particular hole to be a good J-cup for that lift, your safety spotter arm should be pretty close to the same height, so you don't need to go up and down too much. 
Another thing you can use it for is, for instance, doing log clean and press. Oftentimes you burn a lot of energy performing the clean. If you just want to concentrate on the press portion of that lift, you can raise this up to a level to where you can actually rack your 12 inch strongman log, because obviously that's not gonna fit in this piece of equipment. You can also do that for unrackable bars. One that comes to mind is some hex bars are not actually rackable. So you could potentially use this as a rack for a hex bar where a J-cup wouldn't work just because of the larger surface area. Uh, and again, just get creative. Be surprised how many things you can use this for. So another thing that you can do with this is you can actually use it to perform some banded work. So what I've done is I've taken my rack pins and they fit through the holes that are on the side of the arms. And this is actually one of the use, I remember when I first got some of these shorty bands and I was always confused as to why I bought them because they're not really long enough to use in a lot of circumstances, but this is one area where they really shine. So you can take a shorty band, you can put it, hold a hole, you can take that shorty pan, put it between, put it over the bar, and now you actually have some band tension that just comes straight down into the spotter arms. So this would be another really beneficial lift for let's say a pin press or for a log out of the rack press because it's leaving from this location. And again, if you want to make it more difficult, just take it and double the band tension over. So that's the SAML 24. So again, the high points, I love that there's a plastic material with countersunk screws so that it's not going to mess up your bar finish at all. I love that it's 24 inches long, it's plenty of space without being overly obnoxious. It fits actually inside of my rack on the 42 inch rack. I, I like that there's band holes, I like the branding with the gusset. I like the fact that there's a pin hole here. I feel like that's almost, like it really is kind of a necessary thing if we think about this. This is a safety piece of equipment so we shouldn't take shortcuts. And again, that's my one piece of feedback, is make a second hole one inch on center so that if you have this top pin inside the west, hole, west side hole spacing, you don't run into an issue where this hole doesn't line up with another hole. But that's the SAML 24, and now we're gonna go ahead and transition to the actual strap safety system. And this is the Monster Light version, not the Monster version. We'll cover that in just a second. All right, so that moves us on to the actual safety straps. These are my preferred safety. So if I'm doing a maximal lift and I'm actually concerned about my safety, these are what I'm gonna end up using nine times out of 10. I just like them better. I like the fact that uh, there's a little bit of give, so if you tap them, so if you tap a normal rigid safety, it really throws you off your game. But if you tap these, you almost don't even notice it if you have it set up correctly. This is the Monster Light version. The Monster Light version adjusts differently than the Monster version. The Monster Light version, in order to adjust the height, it's a very simple operation of just rotating and then putting it back in, whichever hole that you want it, and rotating back down. The way that it's held on is just basically this kind of like C L channel bracket, and it holds it in place. One of the downsides is that it feels a little bit less secure. So maybe one of the ways that they can improve on this design is to have like a second pin maybe that comes in from the backside, or maybe some sort of other way to actually attach this so that it doesn't rock back and forth. It's just kind of a feel good though because most of your pressures are gonna come straight down. They're not really gonna rotate out, but if you put pressure on this and rotate out, you can see there is potential for it to come flying out and hit you right in the shoulder you just had surgery on. That hurt. <clears throat> Again, it's just a small thing. Uh, it really isn't that, that big of a concern uh, because in order to actually have this thing pull out, you have to have quite a bit of sideways tension, uh, which isn't realistic, but I still think it could have been just a little bit more secure in that regard. So maybe a safety pin, maybe a strap, uh, come up with something. I feel like there's, there's a way to improve this here. One of the advantages to this version of the safety system is that if I don't want the safety system here, it's really easy, you just remove it. And you can completely remove it from the system and it's just gone, that simple. With the Monster version, unless you do a modification where you replace these bolts with pins, there's no quick and easy way to actually completely remove the strap system from the rack. You might find yourself asking, 
why would you want to remove the strap system from the rack altogether anyways? And I can answer that question for you. In order for you to move this up and down, you have to have this free and clear of all obstacles. Because I have the Monster Light version, it's as easy as taking this off, putting it on the other upright, which is just my general preferred method of storage, and then you can move this up and down. And you can move it all the way from the top, all the way to the bottom. So another reason that you might want the Monster Light version more than the Monster version, because it comes off and on so easily, is because in the Monster version, if you wanna walk through your rack sideways, you have one of two options. You can either raise these all the way up, which for me is a limiting factor because I have a trolley arm set up, or you can put them all the way down. The problem with that is that there's a slight low point, like there's a, a slope to the straps. So right now they're slammed all the way down. So it's kind of out of the way, but I can definitely still see someone catching that with their foot and tripping and falling. You could put it lower if you wanted to. So that's like the lowest that it goes. But the problem with this is now you have all this extra fabric. My preferred method of storage to keep it out of the way is actually just to put one, put them on the same post and it just falls down on itself just like that. It keeps it out of the way so that if my daughter's in the gym and she's walking around, she doesn't potentially trip over anything. She has, there's already enough trip hazards in a gym. I don't need this piece of cloth being just another trip hazard. So there's a couple different ways that you can use the safety strap. You can have the pin at the same height on the front and the back post. I most often use this kind of a safety setup if I'm doing some sort of squat or I'm, I'm doing rack pulls or something along those lines. I'll set it up. It's, the advantage is, is that the weight, if it fails, is going to go towards the middle of the rack. The main reason that you wouldn't use this particular setup is in the bench press, and I'll go over how to set that up. So this is how I set up for the bench press. You note that wherever the J cups are, the cups, the safety strap rather, is actually lower than the other end where it's up higher. What this is gonna do is it's gonna allow the weight when you fail a rep, it's gonna actually fall right about here. It does take a little bit of experimentation to figure out where these have to be in order for this to be effective for you. But once you have that done, I just have it marked in my rack where it has to be for bench. It just says bench and permanent marker right there. So that's how you set up for bench. What I also want you to pay attention to is the fact that the safety strap mounting point swings in when it's set up for the bench press and it doesn't swing out. There is a reason for this and I'm going to show you that as well. When you're in the bench, let's say for whatever reason you got your bench press you got your bench press configured, the safety strap configured how you wanted it, but let's say they're using a different bar, let's say you're using an axle bar. And with an axle bar, this strap might be a little bit too high. If you have it to where this has to swing outwards, you very quickly see that there's an issue here with the plate. If you have it where it swings in, you can actually still adjust it up and down with no interference from the plate. So just a little bit of a hack that I've learned from experience, set it up so that they swing in and so that they don't swing out. Another nice thing about having the safety straps, and again, you can only really do this if you have the Monster Light version, is you can remove the straps and actually mount them kind of the opposite direction. And before I had an inclined bench, this is actually what I use to get an incline with my bench. I really feel like I'm not, I can't really recommend this because it's probably not the safest thing in the world, but if you just take your flat bench and you put the legs over it, when you actually go to bench, you can be at an incline with the flat bench. Again, it's not the safest option, especially since as you put pressure on this and then you sit in the bench, it kind of pulls out. And if you remember from the demonstration earlier, this just popped right out. So maybe not the best idea in the world, 
but I was successful doing it. I never had the bench fall while I was doing it, but please use your smartness. Don't hurt yourself. But on that, because the Monster Life version is this twist and remove type of setup, it's very easy to move around and do different things with the actual straps. So that's most of the high points with the two different safety systems. So what do you think? Do you prefer more of the stiff safety arm or do you like the safety strap? I think that they both have their advantages and I think they both have their disadvantages. And for me, that meant that I'm just gonna end up getting both of them. Something to note as well that I didn't talk about is you can also use this to like support your foot but for like a Bulgarian split squat, you can put your foot up in this and actually use it to support your foot for a Bulgarian split squat. And also for this, you can use this outside the rack. That's one of the big advantages of this piece of equipment is that this has to be within a power rack. This can be used outside of a power rack. And that's a huge advantage, especially if you prefer to bench on the outside for whatever reason, or if you have multiple athletes training on the same power rack, but those are the safety systems. So what do you think? I think that they're very versatile. I think it's incredibly important to have safety in the home gym. But what do you think? Do you think safety is that big of a deal? Do you think that you should spend multiple hundreds of dollars on safety? Or do you think that money should be spent elsewhere? Go ahead and comment down below. That is the safety strap system, the Monster Light version, and the SAML24, which is the safety arm, Monster Light, 24 inches long, safeties. If you like this video, please go ahead and subscribe down below. I like to make these review videos. They just take a little bit of effort. When you guys like these videos, when you watch these videos, when you give me comments, it makes me think I'm actually doing something beneficial for the garage gym community. So again, please comment down below. Please go ahead and subscribe, watch some of my other videos. If you like what you see, tell me that you like what you see. If you think I could do something different, tell me, please. Did I miss something in the review? Is there something that I like that you disagree with? comment down below. But other than that, that's it for the review and I'll see you next time.